What are you anticipating? We're, I'm anticipating record-breaking turnout. I'm expecting more citizens to vote in Michigan this year than ever in our state's history. And at the same time, more citizens already have voted or are voting by mail than ever before. So to take us through that, uh, we talked to the, your counterpart in Ohio, and he said they both have absentee ballots, but also have early ballots as well as voting on the day. What does Michigan provide for voters? Basically, that same same structure. I mean, citizens have three options to vote this year. They can vote from home, they can vote early in their clerk's office, or they can vote on election day. And then they have multiple ways to return their ballots if they do vote from home or pick up their ballot at their clerk's office. And importantly, we've installed 1,000 secure drop boxes across the state to give citizens the ability to vote from home and return their ballots at their convenience at their local drop box. We've heard a lot of, frankly, litigation about the conditions surrounding FC ballots, but whether you have to sign the outside or not, whether it's be postmarked, whether you have to have a witness, things like that. What are the what are the formalities in Michigan? What do you need to do to have your absentee ballot counted? Well, importantly, uh, you have to sign the envelope in which the ballot is is placed. Uh, that signature does not have to be notarized or no witness or anything like that, but it does have to be legible and it does have to match the signature we have on file. But importantly, just yesterday, the governor signed into law legislation that will require clerks to contact voters if they receive a ballot in an envelope missing a signature or with a signature that doesn't match to give the voter an opportunity to identify themselves and ensure that no valid ballot is uh, not counted and also find irregularities if they occur. Uh, when does the ballot have to be in the possession of the electro election officials? Because we've seen some states where they can come in three days even more later. 8 p.m. on Election Day is, is our uh, standard. There's some litigation trying to evaluate whether ballots sent prior to Election Day but received after should count. But I'm advising every voter to just get their ballots in as soon as possible. If you use the mail, do it in the next few weeks. But again, we've installed over 1,000 drop boxes across the state for citizens to use. And if they've got their ballot in their local drop box by 8 p.m. on Election Day, it will count. We've seen, as I say, litigation around the country. I think it's fair to say a record number of challenges at this point, well over 200. How are you doing in Michigan? What kind of challenges are you facing? Well, it's interesting. I became an election law attorney 20 years ago, shortly after the 2000 election, where, and since then, we've seen an exponential increase in litigation around Election Day. And to be now a Secretary of State with more election litigation than ever before, it's essentially at this point become, you know, there's some credible allegations, but a lot of it has become frivolous and a way to get in the media and also kind of, you know, create uncertainty at a time when we really need to just be communicating to voters what the rules are so that they can ensure that their ballots vote are counted this year. Looking back at 2000, ultimately, obviously, the Supreme Court weighed in and invoked the Equal Protection Clause, invoked a federal constitution, and sort of took yeah. it away. Some people thought took it away from Florida. Do you think ultimately the questions, particularly involving mission, will be, re will be resolved at the state level or will they end up at the federal level? I think the voters of the state of Michigan will determine every race and outcome in the state of Michigan, bottom line. And that's my focus. That's my goal. Uh, and uh, our clerk's goal as well. And I'm, I'm confident that that, is, that that will be the ultimate result. What kind of delays are we looking at? Because when you get that record number of votes, particularly absentee ballots in, uh, and they can come in any, as late as 8 p.m. that night, obviously you're not counting them all in advance. Correct. We're not allowed to. Under Michigan law, clerks can't begin tabulating ballots that are voted absentee until 7 a.m. on Election Day. And when we're talking millions of ballots, over 3 million ballots, it's not possible for any uh, infrastructure to be prepared to, to methodically, securely tabulate all those ballots in 12 hours. It's going to take time. But that time is the process working. It's the time ensuring accurate results. Uh, and we will be updating the public every step of the way so that citizens know exactly when they can accept result, when they can expect the results from Michigan. They will come that week. But they may not come till Friday, and people need to know that that is simply a reflection of the process working. So you said that you're expecting a record turnout. We talked with your counterpart, as I said, in Ohio uh, last week, actually, and he said he had a friendly bet with you. This is part of what he had to say. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have it. So I'll just describe to you. He said it was a friendly bet that actually we're going to have a better turnout in Ohio than in Michigan. He made some derogatory comments about my football team, Michigan Wolverines. I'll leave those yeah. to one side. But but what do you expect? Are you going to beat him in that bet? Yeah, and, and you know he can say whatever he wants. But when Michigan has higher turnout in Ohio this fall, which is what the bet's about, he will have to sing the Michigan fight song at the Michigan-Ohio State football game in the horseshoe this December. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm asking every Michigan voter to make sure that happens by voting this year. 
Uh, are you concerned at all about the security of those drop boxes? There have been some challenges around the country to those. We're, not we're not noting not just the actual security, but also you know efforts to undermine citizens' faith in the security of the process by putting out misinformation, which we've had to deal with here in Michigan. But importantly, we've got secure protocols in place to ensure our drop boxes are secure, that they're monitored and they're surveil their surveillance. And every day, people are removing the ballots from those drop boxes, clerks are, to ensure no ballots are left overnight. So I'm confident this is going to be a secure process and that citizens can trust if they use a drop box, their local drop box, to return their ballot, it will be counted. It might be a late night for you, uh, the night of November 3rd, yeah. I dare say. Anyway, are you bringing extra people on? What are you doing to staff up to make sure you have this all prepared? Yeah, we are. Noting back in the spring when the pandemic began to hit that we were going to face a more uh, urgent shortage of poll workers than ever before, we began a statewide recruitment effort. We've since recruited close to 30,000 new election workers in Michigan. Uh, that's an extraordinary number and ensures that we're ready to go and our precincts will be open, fully staffed, as well as our absentee counting boards to make sure that the process runs as smoothly and as efficiently as possible. Okay, really appreciate your time, Madam Secretary. It's really good yeah. to have you with us.